Fiji lineup. Some been two changes to the Fiji squad. Joseph Ratu Bakasari Ivalu comes into the bench after missing the first two rounds with injury. Also, Tavita Toloi, he's also a late call upon the bench as well. Afi Korosov is back at hooker, and Henry Ravi-Walu is in the house with Brendan Wakem. For Scotland, there have been late changes to this side as well because of injuries. Ewan Aitken and Liam Hood are out. Kyle Schneider goes to hooker. Ben Halliwell drops into the second row with Ryan Briley, also a late dropout. David Dixon getting the nod at fullback. Charlie Emsley's on the bench for his first appearance of the World Cup. The referee for this afternoon's game is Tom Grant, a familiar face to uh, British rugby league fans. And we prepare to get this game underway in Group B. Alongside me then, Kyle Amor, the former Ireland and St Helens forward, will be with Witness in the Championship next season. A big game for Fiji. They can progress with a win this afternoon, but a big game for Scotland as well. Really needed to put some pride in that shirt. Yeah, they really do. And they've gone after Aim up here defensively because, you know, here we are again, we were here over a week ago when the Fijian side absolutely destroyed the Italians. And it was that left edge, wasn't it? Of Kikau, Sivo, Valame. They absolutely tore it apart. So expect Ben Halliwell and Walmsley and company as well to see a lot of traffic course of all of that Brandon Wakeham pulling all the strings three try assists to his name that day I want to see some quality rugby league here there's no doubt about that Sharon so the applause in the background is for the 13 seconds a moment of unity one game together which is being observed ahead of kickoff throughout this tournament and we prepare to see the Fijians get this game underway the last round in Group B, the final game will be later this evening as Australia take on Italy. And Fiji kick long downfield to get this game started. The ball taken by Lachlan Wormsley. And he's straight in into it, that tackle. And it comes in from Sonny Taruva, the Fijian fullback. Scotland will be really looking to, to have some decent ball retention this, e this evening, uh, Kyle, to, to really just have that possession, which they didn't get against Australia. Yeah, it's so important that you, these early stages in the game, you... You get it's through your move. sets, get to the end of your kicks, Hold back it up with a good kick chase. Oh, nice. At the moment, there, the Fijians are doing exactly what they did here last week, and that was just really restrict any oh, sort of meters game together. by their opposition. Oh, oh. Or inside now, tackle four. I think it's Dale Ferguson. Oh, it's, oh, sorry, Sam Luckley, he's just got to carry it over. The former Newcastle man himself, oh. now, of course, with the Salford Devil, the tackle five Hold comes in. And Scotland with work to do to try and gain a little bit of territory. The kick long comes downfield. Covered by Taruva, and he takes that possession and drives towards the Scottish line. We've looked, Kyle, at the changes to both of these sides. Just briefly looking at, at Scotland, Ryan Briley missing this afternoon because of injury. Um, you and Aitken out as well, both influential players. Yeah, it is, you know, when you lose all two important players like you mentioned you know put, put the Scottish side they've got to look to the rest of the squad and it's an opportunity for those that come in here today to show what it means to them to play for the country so Fiji try to drive the way forward first set for them in this game not so evident already Sharon is just look at the yardage at the gain in Coruscant giving it to Sims there he finds a five on his front isn't it it's a quick play of the ball Coruscant again at acting half goes to Wakeham kick goes across field that could be a tester the ball bounces back I think it's clean as well the kick long downfield scooped up though by that Scottish defence David Dixon there on the spot but that looked dangerous from Fiji yeah it certainly did you know it was a it wasn't perhaps the best kick there from Wake and we saw a couple of times last week when he was under pressure he didn't quite get the kick where he wanted and as the kick almost lands on top of his wing his head but it doesn't really it's not really much of an attacking kick off the back of that Kevin Agama chips forward like you mentioned there, Dixon, he's nowhere to go over than close the goal line dropout. It's a good start for Fiji. And not the best of dropouts either, really, from Scotland, only gaining that 20 metres or so forward, putting Fiji in a decent position. Moving it central, in the arms now of Sandrugu at loose forward this afternoon, keeping it alive, playing on, says the referee, there goes Sims! Sims right on the spot, held up, says the referee. Thought for all money it was going to be a try there. And Tom Grant. Besides, he's been held up, Corbin Sims. It looked like it just opened right up for him. But still dangerous now for Fiji, keeping the ball moving out towards the left hand side. Kick out. 
Kick out met by Bell, playing in the halves today for Scotland. Ten metres out. Chorus out. Centre of the field. Bunny Iowa drives forward. Going close now with Fiji, getting their big forwards to do the work. Corisau again, moving out towards the left-hand side, looping ball, taken back by Kiko in the end. I think the possession forced out of the arms by Wormsley and the referee right on the spot. Yeah, he's given a knock on there, hasn't he? And rightly so. You just see there as the play unfolds, there's a loose hand there from Wormsley. Kikau tries to get it back and regather. He throws it into Wormsley, but it's going to be a knock on and a head and feed to Fiji. We just see that knock on there, Sharon. He had to go for it though, didn't he? Yeah, but I mentioned before the game, didn't have that left edge. It will see a lot of the ball movement down that side and it's proven once again. Go on! Two or two times it came down there. Go on! So the scrum taking place. A little bit of a shuffle about there, I think, for the players, deciding who's going to be putting the ball in. It's uh, Mike Acevo in the end and out and away from the base. Wakeham, ball flat out towards the right. Nice tackle coming in from Scotland. But Fiji very much with the advantage in these early stages. Driving forward. Going very, very close now to that line. Just to the left-hand side of the post, about inches out from that line. Corisau, it goes back. Played back to Bunny Iowa. Tries to drive his way through, finds his way through the middle. Scotland's defence stands firm. Corisau again to Wakeham, combining through the middle. Surrender, surrender, Stutters surrender. a little, changes surrender. his mind which way he's going. And the tackle's completed. In there is Sam Luckley, oh. back in the side after missing the game against Australia with illness. But Fiji looking dangerous now in the middle. That's the first try of the game. I think it's Sandrugu, the scorer. And Fiji open their account for the afternoon. Yeah, it was just too much, wasn't back-to-back -back sets. They couldn't defend it out there. And you mentioned Sandrugu. I thought he was incredible last week. Well, he's got over to a terrific start. A couple of carries through him already. Four in total in the opening exchange. He said it's just poor soft defence, isn't it? It just gets in between the two Scottish players. I think it's Jack Teamby there. It just gets in between there. It's, he needs to be a better tackle. You know, it warrants a better tackle for that. But let's take nothing away there from Sandrugu. Just pure power there, starting at loose forward here today and already had some good involvement and he gets himself a try and Fiji are on the board. 4-0, kick to come. Almost certain this will be six right in front of the middle of the post. It's a great start for Fiji. Tani Alessandrungu very much involved last week as well in the win over Italy, which has more or less secured that second place. Fiji beating Italy by 60 points to four last week. And in that game, Brandon Wakeham's kicking seven goals and he will try and add to that tally for his World Cup this afternoon, straight in front of the post as well. And so it should be a relatively straightforward kick, an ideal start for the Fijians. Scott's just gathering away to the right-hand side of the post. A bit of an inquest going on already. Yeah. Very early for that to start. Oh, it's never a great sign, is it? But just the, the ease that they fell over that try-line defence as a, as a front rower, that's the one that sort of dents your confidence, really hurts your ego. And from there, it was just such a simple try, wasn't it, from Sandra Gu. You know, he, he get, got his first try last week for Fiji on his fifth cap, well, he gets another one on his sixth, doesn't he? Two tries for him. He was a standout in the Queensland Cup season with the Townsville Blackhawks. Earned himself a top 30 shirt for the, new, uh, for the Queensland Cowboys. And you can see why there. It's a big ball carrier as Scotland restart the play again. We see the difference there, don't we? That the players that have had a little bit even of NRL experience playing up against the likes of a Jack Team B who ply their trade in the championship in the British game. And you see, you see the task ahead for, for some of these Scottish players, but what an experience for that squad. Yeah, certainly, Shannon, but look, at four or five minutes into the game, I don't quite buy that, that you know, Jack Team B early on, it, it, you know, it's just body on body, it's man on man. And this is certainly isn't going to help them. This is a really part, you know, what's so important that when you can see points is that you look to assert your dominance, you look to, to get straight back in that grind, that wrestle. And when you're just giving away a penalty straight on the halfway line, well, in the blink of an eye, as Wakeham, he kicks the ball over. They're going to be 30 metres away from the Scottish line and it's just deja vu for them already. Just defending their own try line continually. So Fiji start their set, looking strong again with that run coming in there from Sims. Sims, who uh, 
did announce his retirement. It got cut short at the end of last season because of a suspension. He was able to go out with his World Cup appearances now, though. Sandrungu, the try scorer, looks to offload, finds the offload. Good support coming in from Fiji. Tackle completed nicely, though, by Scotland. It's Taruva playing the ball. Corosau again, finding space from the acting half position. Gave himself up a little there as he ran into the uh, Scottish line. Potentially a hint that could have been obstruction, but he managed to, to just pull out of it. And now it's Funny Ayua going through. Brought down five metres away from the line. Corisau once more, looking to pick up the pace, out along the line. Fast hands, Sandrungu hesitates there before going for that line. I'm not quite sure why or what momentarily went through his head, but he decided that was the best option. And this is the last of the set for Fiji. Here comes the kick. It goes over the top of the Scottish defence. Through there is Wormsley. He's not taking it cleanly. Play on, says the referee. Tackle count quite clean as well. Bunny Ayua. Hanging on here, Sharon. They really are. And Fiji with tremendous possession in a great position as well. With that momentum. Corey Sow, six again with the set restart. This will be a real tester for Scotland's defence. Will Fiji crack it? They're over the try line once already. Will it be twice in quick succession? Here's Wakeham. Moving it out along the line. There's support again. Good tackle coming in from the Scottish defence. That absolutely was a try save. A space in the corner as well. Otherwise, it goes back along the line. It finds Raiwala. Raiwala. Say that again. Raiwala. Standoff. We'll get there eventually. Moving it out towards the centre. Apologies for that. It's Corris out. And a knock on at the play of the ball. Yeah, Sandra Goo just tries to play the ball far too quick. I think it was. And then the act of doing so. It's away an arrow. Just see here there. He's won the floor. He's earned the right to play the ball quickly, but you have to regain your feet properly. And on that occasion, the referee decides that that's a knock on. Scotland survived, don't they? You just felt that you could already see the physical dominance that this Fijian side have over the Scottish. Making far too many metres, getting in between tackles, winning the run. I think Scotland need to take heart, though, from the fact that there was wave after wave of attack coming yeah. there. And in the end, it was an error, but they kept that line intact. Yeah, brilliant. And it was a good tackle there, wasn't it, in that corner there from Bailey Louis. I think it was on Valamir, and it had to be a good one as well. So it's Scotland with the ball. Let's see what they can do with it. Quite a few changes positionally for Scotland because of the late pullouts. David Dixon in at uh, full-back to start with. James Bell coming into the halves. That'll be interesting to see how he goes this afternoon. Been influential for the Scots at loose forward, particularly against Italy in round one. Big hits going in there. Huge hit. Huge hit coming in from the uh, Fijian forward. But the ball goes back, still in the arms of Scotland. Not a great kick coming through by Garn. But they managed to keep on with possession. The little kick goes through, though, and it's picked up by Wakeham, and it's Fiji again with ball in hand. A little bit scrappy from Scotland. It's a poor end to the set, isn't it? I think it's Gannon there, tries to get his kick away. What about this for a tackle there? Corbin Sims and Kikau also just leaving a piece on him. But there's a result. They can't finish the, she uh, the set, Sharon, quite how they want. And once more, Fiji just roll forward. And they're 32 metres away from the Scotland line. Metres coming easy at the moment as well to Fiji. With the roll they've got on in each of the sets as well as just Scotland not really getting out of, of their half when they, they do have that set of six to do that with. So here's Corisau. Again, out along the line. Almost a little dummy there by Rai Walai. And again, Ray, Ray Walui. I will get there. I've got a mental block with that name. Apologies. By 80 minutes on, we might be fine. But a knock-on comes again there. Well, they just jumped down the short side there, Sharon. It's quick rook after quick rook. Kick out, tries to introduce the Valamey. Just a little soft, short pass there. The hole's open for him, but he can't take it in. And Scotland, well, look, they might be getting beaten in and around the rope, but they're certainly hanging on in there. Once again, though, this Fijian side, they're not frightened to make an error. We mentioned that pre-game. They've come up with a few already. So let's see how far Scotland can make up the field this time. Six again. Six again. So that will be good for Scotland at least, get an extra couple of tackles, although it still was early in that count, but everyone will matter this afternoon for the Scots. That's great defensive work there from Sandra Goo and Buddy Uwawa. And there's Bell for Scotland, met by those three Fijian defenders. 
the ball's played to Schneider. Schneider in for Liam Hood. He's missing as well this afternoon through injury. Looking to let go of the ball there was Luckley. Couldn't manage to get the ball out despite the arm being free from the tackle. Now it's Team B. Team B driven into the ground. Great defence there coming in from Josh Warren. So look how tight he is on that, on that wrestle there. Just making sure that he wins the collision, that he's, the rest of the team are back and set. Well, this is the last. The ball goes back to Dixon. Dixon goes high with that kick. Underneath it safely is Taruva, and he takes it cleanly, and the extra yards are made for Fiji. Just a little observation there, Sharon, how deep that the halfback kicked the ball from there. I think it's a smart ploy from Scotland. We've seen earlier that they got enough kick pressure on. I think it was Gannon when he couldn't quite get the ball away. And on that occasion, he just adjusts and he sits back a bit deeper and allows him to kick the ball and clear his own end. But copy and paste. They're straight back at them, aren't they? Mike Acevo in off his wing, doing a few hard yards for the Fijian. Just look how quick it's getting here once again. Bunny Iowa just gets in between players. And Fiji rolling forward, looking nicely there with the oh. ball. And there's a breakthrough. It's Ryan Lui going through. He's got support from Kikau. And Kikau touches down behind the post. It was coming again. You could feel it with the possession. Fiji score. Well, Henry Rewa Lui, sorry. He dazzled everybody in this stadium there because I even lost sight of the ball sat up here. Kikau supporting on the inside. Gets the pass, does he? Throws the blind ball back to kick out. But the magic's all here, isn't it? Everybody in the blue shirt confused. The crowd up here are. And kick out there. He has the presence of mind to drop back under him and just give his, his goal kicker a better angle. The ball even almost as the cameraman there, too. But what about that? Beautiful little pass back inside. Kick out two tries last week and another one on the ball tonight. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The pump, the show, the goal. And the flick pass back on the inside is just sensational. Great start for Fiji. Ray will be bringing plenty of experience into this side as well for Fiji. 19 caps, a 33 year old. And Fiji again with a straightforward looking conversion from underneath the post for Brandon Wakeham to try and add the two. So a great start for Fiji. It could be another long night, I'm afraid, for Scotland the way this game has started. The 84-0 against Australia last Friday at Coventry was their record defeat in a World Cup. And they'll be hoping that they're not staring down the barrel of something similar here this evening. It's been a disappointing couple of games for the Bravehearts. As Brandon Wakeham now prepares to take that conversion. Two from two. 12-0 to Fiji. And they're already taking control of this match. We've talked, oh, Kyle, about the players who were in. Ray will I, Ray will I are coming through at uh, stand-up. Wasn't in the halves last week. He's looking good this week, though. He certainly is there. And the magic was all done there for him, wasn't it? That man in the street that kick out, joining the, the Bulldogs next season over in the NRL. The grand final winner, of course, with the Penrith, uh, with the Penrith Panthers as well. A terrific Pat Rowe. He's one of the stars of the game. But it's just this again, isn't it? First carry in that set, set off the points. You really want to assert your dominance, you know, make sure you're nice and tight around that ball and you're just able to get an offload away. But just keep an eye on how quick and how many metres this, this Fijian side are making compared to their opposition. And as a result, it's no wonder why you see the half-back running. Because everything's on the front foot for them. Kick out going forward. Great pace coming through again from the back from Taruva. That's fantastic footwork there on Taruva. Just standing up Jack team, but he can't even get back. But just look again. They're just rolling forward with absolute ease. Good ball to Sims. Sims managing to offload and keep it alive again to Coruscant. They look like they're having fun, don't they, Sharon, the Fijians? This is the last of the set for the Fijians. Wakeham with the kick. It's high, it's spinning. Out on that far side, taking it is David Dixon. Nagama right on top of him as well with the chase. Yeah, we we'll just watch the kick pressure there. Schneider does enough, doesn't he? Because as soon as that ball touches his hand, his foot's over the line there for Dixon. So, irrespective of that ball going dead. 
so Fiji then with again the possession we've talked about players that uh, are in and out for Scotland we've not mentioned yet about Kami, uh, Kami Actually, I think it's a penalty, penalty, to, penalty Fiji. to Fiji yeah yeah that, that kick pressure from Snyder was obviously too much I didn't see anything wrong with it if I'm honest no it's a Scotland ball isn't it all oh, right well he's just trying to confuse all of us up here then <laughs> So Scotland come forward, I was going to say about uh, Kami Kathika, that Kam no! Kami no, Kami 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 Not playing, suspended, no, I've practised, I've practised and I still stumble and I do apologise. Um, Kami Kami suspended, he's a big loss for the Fijians. Yeah, he certainly is, you know, the Melbourne Storm from Rowan, another one, he was just another one of those guys that just really set the platform and the Fijians have forced an error here. It's just more and more pressure piling on the Scottish side now. So the referee's got a captain challenge on his hands. Let's see what he's got to say about this. challenge done with for the evening it failed on that challenge on the knock-on and so it'll be Fiji's ball with that head and feed an early substitution as well coming in for uh, Scotland Matty Russell the winger going off to be replaced by Charlie Emsley his first appearance of the World Cup and he's a forward so we'll uh, try and work out how that's going to be reshuffled but Fiji with that possession and a penalty awarded to Fiji as well from the scrum when you compound an error with another error usually leads to a try doesn't it it's an error and a penalty just breaking away from that scrum too quick Lake him okay, puts the ball Let's down go, 15 go, meters go. away from the the Scottish line can you imagine I think the Fijians are going to get over this set Sharon I think it's just got to be too much for them Woo! it's funny how you were brought down and the tackle just Woo! outside the tent That's you. here goes Corisau the middle of the field Possession with Sandrungu. Pressure really being put on that line by the Fijians. Out to Wakeham. Wakeham has got the runners coming around him. The space out on the right hand side as well. And the Gama oh, tries the offload. Out on the far side. Karawalevu not quite ready for it. And the ball goes into touch. Well, it was wonderful ball movement, wasn't it? There. You just see it all unfold. Half back to another. Out to the back to Taruva. 9, 6, 7, and 1 all combined. Trying to get. Kevin Agama. so often we've seen that that he gets on the outside of, of his centre and creates a two-on-one with the flick pass there just goes behind him and we're just waiting for a ball to uh, come onto the pitch a couple of the Fijian players just, just asking for it it's like right on the touchline and eventually eventually it gets to where the player the ball should be And it must have come off a Scottish hand as well for that possession still to be with the Fijians. As Vunny Ayua goes through as first receiver. There's Corisau out along the line, keeping it moving. A space out wide. Oh, taken by Rossi on his own 10. Wobbs is in the clear. I don't think the Fijians are going to catch him. It'll be his second try of the tournament. Scotland's second try of the tournament. And Wobbsley goes in for Scotland. Well, he's just picked the pocket there, hasn't he? Lachlan Walmsley. Well, the Halifax Panthers have formerly been Whitehaven as well. A terrific try scorer up in Cumbria. Well, he picks the pocket of the Fijian side. This left hand edge that they came to once more. And as soon as he catches that, I think everybody in this stadium knew he was away. 
an 80 meter dash nobody could get within 10 meters of him you just see the ball coming out there that pass over the top there it's snatched and plucked out of the sky and the Scottish flyer races away it's an important score isn't it all against the runner play inside the opening quarter you see that pass over the top not quite where it needs to be and it's a gift isn't it he's been prolific in the championship for Halifax says Lachlan Wormsley 28 tries in 24 games just Scotland's second of the tournament and with the absence as well of Ryan Briley it's Wormsley with the attempt to convert his own try it's just that, that last pass there wasn't it from Ray Willoughby just over the top. I can see what he's trying to do, of course. He's trying to find Mickey Seymour on that left edge. Because if the ball gets to him, well, he's in an acre of space. But Walmsley, with his body turned in, his arm stretched high in the sky, plucks it out the air. He's not helped himself, really, has he? Could have perhaps made his kick a bit more easy for himself. He wasn't bothered, was he? He just wanted on the board. I think everybody in the ground knew where that pass from the Fijians was going, but Wormsley right on the spot. And it takes some doing, doesn't it? Spotting it, being in the right position, leaping up and making sure you get hold of that ball with that possession and then and then well, basically a, doing a 100-metre sprint. It's an all-or-nothing play, isn't it? If he gets that wrong or the pass is on the money, it's another Fijian try, isn't it? And that's an awful attempt of a kick as well. Perhaps the excitement of scoring got to him there. He's too much lactic acid in them legs after that 100 metre dash. What we just see there, the final pass. You can see the importance of the all and off in play there from Walmsley, and it gives them hope, doesn't it? 22 minutes in, 12 4, and they've been second best by a country mile at the moment. You mentioned there, Fiji. It's just another error, isn't it? What I did notice there, Kyle, was the chase from the Fijians. The speedsters that you might have expected to go after Wormsley didn't. Well, he's incredibly quick, isn't he? James Bell now, good little bit of footwork there, but they've dealt with him. Oh, back and, home. Home, mate, and it's the Scots back home. in possession, a knock on there. The ball, and I bet if there was a captain's challenge, I think James Bell might have been keen on uh, having another go at that, but they don't have one left. It's and disappointing, it's clearly isn't it, really? Again, he's just won the floor or trying to win the floor. And the most important part there for James Bell is to keep hold of the ball, regain your feet, play it correctly. Just manages to catch the boot of one of the Fijian players and dislodge it. And he spills the ball. It's a big error, really, 15 metres away from their own line. Set after points as well. But Scotland, and he knows it. Scotland back in it with that try, but pressure now to withstand again from the Fijians in their own... 20 metre line, oh what a run going forward there from Fiji and is that another try is Taruba got that ball down the referee on the spot is sending it up to the video referee James Child Wormsley appeals, let's see what they've got to say yeah good video referee to match director there's an on field decision of no try please come and check all available angles for ground feet. We're looking to determine whether the ball gets to the floor or the player is held up. Live call is no try. The ball is up at that point. We then we lose sight of the ball at that point. Is there any other angle on this? We can't see the ball there. Is this going to be our best angle? Okay, so this is our best angle. Let's have a look at this again. Okay, so the ball is up at that point. Clearly up. We then lose sight of it. I can see it there again. I think he gets it down. And at that point there, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Can we just take it back? Let's watch this one again, because this is our best angle. This is all we've got. Okay, from here now. Keep 
keep it going, keep it going. So the ball is wrapped up at this point. There is a Scotland arm under the ball. Keep it going. We then lose sight of it, but the arm appears to be still under the ball at that point. We cannot see whether the ball gets down. The ball is, appears to be up there at that point. Okay, just take that back there, just to take it back a, a bit. Keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. Okay, from here now. From here. Okay. There is the ball down. There appears to be black under the, under the ball to me. So uh, on the basis of the live call, I have to spot the live call. Thank you, Matthew. I've seen all the angles I need. So the referee has made his decision. It was a no try given on the field. All eyes on the big screen here at Kingston Park. Did Taruba get that ball down cleanly? No, he didn't. No try given to Sonny at Taruba. Now we sat and watched those replays here, Kyle. Well, I thought he got it down, Sharon. I really did. Just you, right at the end there. We saw the tip of the ball, didn't we? But it's awful defence, isn't it, once again? There's three opportunities there to, to stop Taruva. Yes, he is a strong ball carrier, meters out of contact all the time, but I just thought that he got that ball down there, but never mind. I understand why James Charles had to go with that decision. So Fiji still in prime position. Let's see if they can get another try after Taruva's effort being not given. Good work there from the Scotland defence, just standing up a little bit more in that tackle, taking them back two or three metres. Bit of a shove, Corisau at acting half. Here comes Sims again on the charge. Sims is stopped. Corisau goes to the right again. Bit of a step, almost half a gap. But again, Scotland are there with the defence. This is the last of the set. Fiji, the grubber kick coming through from Corisau. There's a pile of bodies in there. The referee right at the side. And he's ruled to drop out. Well, they get six balls, don't they? But I'm a bit confused and scratching my head around what Fiji were trying to do in that set. It didn't really seem like any sort of structure or, or play or pattern of play they were putting on. They were just trying to brew one power game. And then bash the front door down and Scotland answered it. Fiji need to perhaps show a little bit more, don't they, in their attack. Short drop out here. I'm not really a fan of this. As the ball goes to ground, it's picked up by Scotland. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some latest injury news. Jenna Double. is on the sidelines. Yeah, Maddie Russell, uh, the Scotland winger, came off. I've been told that he has uh, a strain to his hamstring. He's currently got that ice. Unlucky, or unlikely, I should say, to return for Scotland. A massive blow for Nathan Graham, who's still without Ryan Briley, Ewan Aitken and Liam Hood. You can now add Maddie Russell to that list. Thanks, Jenna. Scotland then on the attack. Logan Bailey's brow on off the bench. Well, they're doing it so far, aren't they, Scotland? Jenna mentioned those injuries. Well, they've lost a they've lost a winger and they've only got four front rowers on the bench, so there's a, perhaps a bit of reshuffle in that back line. And Scotland already counting down with this tackle count and still inside their own half of the field. The kick eventually goes down from Garm. Taruva is there and has it covered takes the possession cleanly, tries to bat off that first line of defence, takes it on the second, and Scotland now really needing to keep Fiji inside their own half of the field. It's relatively close on the scoreboard. It doesn't feel like it's been that close so far on the pitch, Kyle. No, it certainly doesn't, and look, look we, have to, we have to applaud Scotland then in that department for, for their efforts to just keep doing enough to turn Fiji away and keep the scoreboard still in touching distance. That last set from them was better, wasn't it, with the ball? But they're in trouble here as Nagama breaks now. Yeah, Nagama's in the clear. He's got one man to beat. David Dixon's there and he's beaten. The ball has come out. He's gone to ground. Scotland just doing enough, but Fiji with the possession back, with the momentum as well. Still plenty for Gians to get back into position. And I think they've just managed to take a breath and get reorganised after that break. Here we go. What can they do with it? A nice step off one foot, step off another going forward. Is Wong gets to his feet. The ball is played back inside, long and deep to Wakem, who puts the kick in over the top. A tester again for Wong's lead. He takes it cleanly, passes that test. Scotland with possession. Really poor end to that set there from Fiji. And it, 
Yeah, to be honest, a really poor set in general. Corbin Sims there trying to throw himself about, but Brandon Wakeham, that kick over the top, it was it was a poor kick, if I'm honest. But what a hit from Sims. He's putting himself about a bit for the Fijians. He always has done in his career, all throughout the NRL and in the Super League with Hull KR. Move, move you see here, Lachlan Warms, he would to try and get a quick tap. Watch this, bang. Sims there taking no prisoners. The way you said that, I got the impression you might have been on the end of one or two of them. <laughs> well, it was him and his brother who I played against, so yes. probably between the pair of them that are rattled me at some stage. <laughs> so it's Scotland, who'll be the next one to be rattled then by Sims on this pitch tonight. Scotland with the ball. It's played to Schneider. A few more metres gained, and this will be the last for the Scots. James Bell. Aye, spinning kick from him. Bodies underneath it from both shirts, taken by Scotland, and it's travelled back, but we're still on the last. Here's Bell. Rubber kick goes through. That will just safely find fine. touch. But from what we've seen from Scotland, not a bad end. Well, that's the first time that they've been able to get to a tackle five kick in the territory of the Fijian side. And the kick isn't quite dealt with, is it, from the kick defence of Fiji. Comes up with the Scotland ball. It's Bell with boot to ball again. And he just rolls it 11 metres over the sideline. But where Scotland need to really get better at, it's this. This part of the field, not letting people there. You see the Kevin Nagama beats the first, second man, playing the ball too quick again. And just look at the shape in and amongst this Fiji side. You can throw a blanket over, over them almost, Sharon. They're only coming one way, and that's between the scrum lines. Because so far, when they've done that, they've just so easily made 10, 15 metres every single time. And... And that's where Scotland ultimately are losing it. They're losing the rook completely. And we're seeing with Fiji in those early tackle counts, it's, it's route one smack up the middle and it's been effective for them. It's the power game, isn't it? They're all incredibly strong, direct. And when you do that, you put those halves in on the front foot, you give them more options with the ball, more options to kick as well. The last then for Fiji, the ball goes back, it's launched high. Dixon is there under that challenge, taken well by Dixon. Pressure coming in from Ray Walui. And that is a brilliant, brilliant tackle there. Ray Walui just follows his half-back partner's kick with a terrific chase and has enough about him there just to push him over the line. Dixon, it's a great tackle, isn't it? And if you look where we think, if we, if we remember where that set started, it started 11 metres away from Fiji's line and then the blink of an eye, they're just making this Scottish side defend once more. Let's go, mate. And that has been one of the big differences we've seen between these two sides this evening. The metres they've been gaining in their sets. Short kickoff from Scotland, batted back right to the feet of Fiji, though, and Scotland drop on it and come up with the possession. Well, I said that the last time they did that, I'm not a fan of it. And I'm not a fan of it because, for me, the impression that I get from Scotland is they need to kick the ball long and decide if they want to defend as a, as a middle unit and as a group and put the bodies in front. They've done that twice and it's a high-risk play because if they get it wrong, well, Fiji, are, they've played the power game already and they're 10 metres away. But they get away with it once more and it's worked so far for them, so they ain't going to change that. Fiji right edge has to be able to anticipate that and expect to deal with it much, much better. Set restart indicated by the referee for the infringements they saw out the play of the ball, giving Scotland another set of six. And Scotland find themselves into the Fijian half of the field, trying to move it with a little bit more pace. Here's Bell, nice hands, keeping it shifting out wide. Scotland trying to find the space going through. Bailey Lou brought down to ground, but just outside the Fijian, 30. It is better from Scotland. Bell taking the ball in, offloading it, again going on the short side to Lou. He's brought down. And now it's Wormsley appealing for it in the middle of the field. Scotland keeping it moving. David Dixon involved there in the build-up to that. And this will be the last of the set. Schneider again gets it to Bell. Bell with the kick, not too high on that one. It's spinning straight into the arms of Wormsley, who loses that ball. And Wormsley had nowhere to go anywhere there. Sebo was straight on him. Yeah, wasn't a great kick either. Just floated over the top and Wormsley there, just as soon as he caught it, Sebo showing all of his experience. Uh, as soon as Wormsley catches it, he just waits, holds and hits him there. Sorry, it's Valame, not Sebo. You see here Taruva once again. Just watch the Fijians, how they get in between players. 
and then just get on their elbows and knees, look to play the ball quick, and just continually roll forward. And it's so, so difficult. Often, Sharon, you hear players talking about being in that washing machine. Well, that's exactly what it is. You can't even get your breath back. You can't, by the time you turn around, they're, they're straight on top of you. This is the last of the set from Fiji, the kick downfield coming from Wakeham. Again, that turns the Scottish defence. It'll be watched by Walmsley. The ball just slows down. He gets it. Now, did he get that ball to the right side of the whitewash? Yes, says the referee, he did. Good work by Walmsley. He started well this evening. Certainly has. Scotland coming clear now of their own line. Whoa, big tackle again coming in there. Tangi Tuimua getting involved. He's just come onto the field. Kick out as well. Tangi Tuimua, man of the match last week. Two tries to his name as well. Work to do then from Scotland. Fiji's defence at the moment doing a beautiful job of keeping the Scots back inside their own 20. Well, let's get an update on now the on the substitution from uh, Fiji. Happy Corriso going off. Jenna again on the sidelines. Yeah, Sharon, that's right. Fiji star hooker Abby Corisal has just actually put his hand up and asked to come off for a bit of a rest. Remember, he played in, Panth in the, the Penrith Panthers grand final. He also played in the halves last week, so he's getting a much-deserved uh, rest. I'm told he will return in the second half, though. Thanks, Jenna. So for now... Well, that's criminal there from the Scots. Niyogi. A penalty from 30 metres out, and they can't no, no. find touch. And it's straight down the throat of the far side winger and it's Fiji that go forward it's the little things isn't it in Scotland's game like that that, that really throughout the tournament have, have let them down a little bit yeah certainly and on that occasion there they just can't quite get enough distance on that ball it's 30 metres away from their own line centre of the field Tangi Tuimura at half back the ball keeps moving Again, we come down this left-hand side for Fiji, picking up the pace, trying to get that straight run. Great tackle coming in from Scotland. But Fiji still threatening. Kick out. Out to Rewa Louis, keeping it moving. Fiji trying to get that momentum again to Wakeham. Out wide. Space for Fiji. It looks like another try going in. What a tackle coming through. Doing just enough to make sure that try line stays intact. But Scotland still having to work. The ball comes back for Fiji to the centre of the field. The kick comes in again from Wakeham underneath. It's Walmsley again. He's missed it straight into the arms of the Fijians. And Henry Raymond Louis is the man that collects it and benefits. And the try is given. Well, he set the try up earlier, didn't he, Raymond Louis? And on this occasion, he's the beneficiary, isn't he, of a back back or an error from Walmsley. Very difficult to see from up here how that ball came out. But the kick from Wakeham, I think it was ends up in that man's hands and Henry Rewalui dots down for the first try of the Rugby League World Cup and it's an important one as well isn't it a terrific tackle over on this far side the resulting player then ends up with a nice little kick from centre field from Wakeham I think it is Wormsley Sharon I think you're right he just can't deal with that catch can he under the pressure of kick out Ray Walui just puts the ball down under the poles. Just look at the challenge on it. There's two Fijians in there, just causing too much disruption there for Walmsley. His skills tested and it's broken. Ray Walui scores. And he scores an important try, doesn't he? It's 16-4. You just felt there that if Scotland could somehow jag a try, well, the game could have almost been turned on its head in terms of the scoreboard. But that there, it's probably a fair reflection, really, isn't it? This VG inside have just been very, very dominant, very patient. Perhaps some of the skill that they put on show isn't quite as good as what we'd hope to see here from them today, given the amount of possession and territory they've had. We we'll see both sets of coaches, both the Fijians and the Scots, and the different, different tales of body language, I think, looking from, for both benches. As Wakeham steps up, and it's successful. That's three from three from Wakeham. Look, I think Nathan Graham's got to be incredibly proud of his men in terms of what the scoreboard's saying. Only three tries, given that it defending your own try line's the hardest part of the, of the field to defend there. But just watch that kick. The chase there. Funny you are, well. And kick out. Well, it's too much, isn't it? Bell tries his very best to escort it, but he can't. Warms and climbs high. His head's turned away from the ball, which is never really a good sign. Ray Walloui 
he just scores but going back to the Scotland team you know I think while there's certainly a, enough evidence there in terms of quality certainly haven't shied away from the task have they so Fiji again with that ball from the kickoff work having to be done by the uh, Scotland defence again Dale Ferguson the captain on the field this evening earning his 22nd Scottish cap he and both Ben Halliwell both on uh, 22 caps Ooh, and a mistake there coming in from uh, Wakeham the ball went backwards no says the referee was knocked on yeah, it's another one of those errors that I mentioned it's just too many when you think about this side and who they're going to potentially play against and probability it is going to be the Kiwis in there we saw that their attack wasn't quite white hot but the Fijian side if they're going to stand any sort of chance in that quarter final they have to be better with the ball soft errors like that coming out your own end to be fair to Fiji they've improved from the warm-up game that we saw three tournament oh, with England doubt. yeah no look look I'm not, I'm not here bagging yeah. Fiji at no, no, all no. I'm just saying that what they've got the, the, the more intensive intense game sorry that they've coming down the road well if you give Fiji uh, if you give sorry New Zealand those sort of cheap errors in that kind of field position well they will make you pay the improvement certainly in the man of course they picked up quite a few injuries in that warm-up game against England too as players have started to come back into the squad as Scotland moving out towards their centres now trying to find a way through can't quite manage it yet as a firework goes off in the background that's the first one I've seen uh, this year's Logan Bailey's brow tries to drive through for Scotland it's a decent carry there isn't it it's taking them to 20 metres out as well swing it out towards the left hand side nice little step from Schneider who sees half the gap and goes for it puts his head down pins his ears back and gets a penalty for his troubles as well the tackle coming in from Tolai someone just comes flying out the line there perhaps the replay will show us who it was but he just steps hard off his foot and then as a result Cops one round the chops, doesn't he? Gets a penalty. You see there, he steps hard off his foot, does Gannon. Tony Uara. So well, what have Scotland got here, yeah. Sharon? First time we've seen this. Very, very close to the line now. There goes Ferguson, tries to charge forward, let his strength do the job. Good work by the Fijians, dragging him back two or three metres in that tackle. Here's Schneider to Bell. Rubber kick goes through. Oh! A space there. What a beautiful way to kick it was from Bell. It almost looked like as the nine jumps out that they've all missed the play. But Bell gets his hands on the ball and he sees the, the left edge of the Fijian side just come up hard and he just puts a gorgeous kick in behind them. And that man there, Ben Halliwell, well, he chases harder than anybody else and it's right on the stroke of half time. And that changes everything in the Scottish changing room now. Just watch this, the kick there. It's brilliant, in behind Valamé. Ben Alliwell is the only one really in the Scottish shirt that's chasing. And that's just pure determination, will and want. And he's dragged his side back into this contest. When it looked like they were dead and buried in this first half, they now go into it with hope. If ever a try was needed, that's an example of it. Certainly is, and what an important kick this is to come as well from Walmsley. We saw him pull the ball a good 15 metres left of the post. If he can nail this, like I said there, just as that try unfolded, it is game back on, Sharon. And somehow, because against all runner play, it's been all Fiji this half, and if our, any of our viewers have just turned in now, for a respectable scoreboard, certainly what we're seeing from the Scots. So Warms are then with the attempt, an easier angle than the last kick, but again across the face of the post, so no goal added there. 18 points to eight, a 10 point gap at half time. Ifs and buts, if those goals have gone over, we really would have had game on, but Scotland must be taking a lot of heart from that. Two tries against the Fijians, just their second and third tries in this tournament so far, and I think it's given the Fijians a bit to think about at half time. Yeah, it certainly has, hasn't it? I just think that they need to be better with the ball for jeans. They're just trying to do the power game too much. When they are moving the ball, hasn't it quite exactly come off. They haven't been able to ice opportunities. And Scotland, well, credit to them. 
they've hung in there they've hung in there and they've hit back they hit back with a Walmsley intercept against the runner play and a gorgeous kick there from James Bell well, the Scottish loose forward playing at half today comes up with a brilliant kick so at half time then it's Fiji 8 sorry Fiji Scotland 8 Fiji 18 Sharon, I have the Fiji captain alongside me, Kevin Nagama. Kevin, you can't be happy with how that half ended. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. You know, hats off to Scotland. They're playing really good football, just doing the simple stuff right. Um, really disciplined half from us on both sides of the footy, so I'm going to look to fix that up in the second half. So discipline is going to be the main talking point in there? Yeah, I, I definitely think so, for sure. Okay, go and get in there. Thanks for talking to us, Kevin. We can now speak to uh, one of Scotland's try scorers, Lachlan Wormsley. Look at that big smile on your face. You've got to be pleased with that. Just end it. Yeah, obviously, um, it was a tough couple of, couple of weeks, uh, two last weeks. We struggled against Australia, struggled against uh, Italy, and uh, it was just good to come out and give these Fiji, Fiji boys a game, so yeah, it's good. What's this second half going to look like from your perspective? Um, we've just got to stop their forwards again. You can see they're just going one out in their backs as well. They're just, they're just trying to get us through the middle. We've just got to stop that momentum and, um, yeah, do better in the second half. Yeah, well, good luck for that big second half. Thanks, Lachlan. See you later. Well, Hendo, have you seen the kind of passion and heart from Scotland that you were wanting? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, they've done incredibly well to still be in the contest because I think if we look at that, at the context of that first half, I thought Fiji dominated field position, they dominated possession. Um, but unfortunately for Fiji, just probably weren't clinical enough at, at the right areas of the field. So I think Scotland can take a lot of credit that they've scrambled well, certainly defensively, they've hung in there. And then the opportunities that they have been given, you know, they've taken their chances. So you know, I, I'm really, really pleased. There's certainly more... more competitive uh, performance from them so far. Yep, Fiji started well, didn't they? And, and there was ominous signs for, for Scotland with just Fiji's power, the pace, the, how much rook speed they generated. And that ultimately was what contributed to the opening scores for Fiji. And look, they've lacked a bit of fluency, but at certain times they've, they've got it together, haven't they? I think for Scotland, look, when you get slow rooks near your line, Look, you have to defend, you have to have urgency, you have to have real intent, James, don't you? Yeah, but look at this. I know it's a slow look, but they're all class from Apicoros out there. So look at that. We spoke in the pre-game about the deception from nine. So he's looking one way, he's looking the other. Before the play the ball is played, he's actually looking the opposite way to where he goes. And it's a beautifully disguised pass. So a defender, it looks for all money like he's going to hit the second runner. But he goes short, hits Adarugu on a short ball and they're up for the first try of the afternoon. Yeah, and here we see some quick rooks. This leads into the key cow try. And, and and that was maybe the story of the opening sort of 10, 15, 20 minutes was just quick rooks that just led to something. And then, look, this is that, where Fiji that, looked like he's going to open up. That's yeah. special from Ray Willow. That is phenomenal football is. from the, from for, the for me James six. look defensively Scotland were too stark they just stood back let all of this happen if they keep moving yeah. forward here they make contact yeah. it's fantastic skill one dummy two look, dummies uh, three dummies it's great uh, skill it's a great try Scotland just a little bit too passive look, for me. I, I understand where you're coming from Joe like, and James Bell just there he, he plants his feet he stops here he goes he just stops and he lets Ray Willoughby do his, do his magic but that is sensational football yeah, and any, that, yeah. there's lots of lots of the world class defenders that would struggle against that sort of attack, that sort of movement. He makes you plant your feet. You know the yeah. right thing to do is to advance forward yeah, and close yeah. down his space. Well, but because of the deception and the show, you think he's going to do one thing and he ends up doing the other. Yeah, but that's a result as well of, of the Fijian power game. You know, being nice and direct, going forward, generating that ruck speed, allowing Coruscant to get out, and it gives Ray Rilui time and space to put on his magic. You know, again, that's going to be one of the things, I think one of the talking points at halftime for Scotland is they've got to, they've got to manage that defensive effort better around the ruck. They've got to get that tackle management right and try and slow down that ruck speed from Fiji. Well, and all that effort as well from Scotland, sometimes in the, the game of rugby league, you don't get what you deserve and you've just got to hang in there. Yep. So Fiji probably deserved to be a bit more advanced on the scoreboard, but Scotland have hung in there and you have to do that at times and yep. you've just got to be desperate. Yep. They've done that and now with that try at the end from Halliwell, they're actually in the contest here and they can make a game to it, make a game of this. And you saw what it meant to them at the end where they scored that try just before half time. Players are running in like they've won <laughs> the World Cup. But it's, but it's great to see because we've, 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 not, we've not seen that from Scotland all tournaments so far. And now they're in a contest. It's the last game granted. They're under, they're under all sorts of adversity. They've had two really poor performances. 
a number of key players out missing, but they've turned up today and they've hung in there. Yeah, well, they did. They had to hang in there because it was 78% possession to Fiji at, at a certain time in the half. And, and look, Scotland was scrambling like mad. Fiji were throwing everything at Scotland. And, and it was Kevin Nakama who, if this is scored and if he comes up with this and they score, I think the game could have gone a different way. But credit Scotland, they scrambled and they gave themselves an opportunity through Lachlan Wormsley, putting himself in a great spot. Look, it is a big play because if he gets this wrong, it's a try. Well, look, he didn't get it wrong. It's a try for him. And look, he's... Sorry, he's had a, a great influence on this Scotland team. And certainly, that just bred life into the Scotland performance. Before yep. this, they were, they were just not in the contest yeah. in any way. And sometimes you need to take an opportunity like that. You need somebody to go the length of the field, somebody to create an opportunity. Lachlan Wormsley single-handedly got Scotland back into this contest for me. Yeah, like you say, sometimes you've just got to hang in there. I would say for Wormsley, though, he is the kicker. You'd think he'd make his job a bit easier for himself, wouldn't you? <laughs> just get under the stick. I, I was thinking that, <laughs> particularly as it clearly not the best no. uh, kicker. They, this was a no try. Do we agree with the decision? Uh, it's, it's hard to it's tell. The wrong, really, yeah, no. this is the wrong clip, Tanya, actually, because this is a repeat set. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, but it's fine. What all, all it was was a lot of pressure being applied onto the Scotland line. They didn't quite get the defence. Uh, you know, they got the defence right and they scrambled really well and you earned the right then to be in a contest. It's maybe what they've not done actually in the previous two games is they've really scrambled hard, they've defended incredibly well, they've been very connected with how they've defended at times and ultimately that's, that's why they're in this contest. Yeah, absolutely agree. I'm, I'm just really, I'm buzzing, to be fair, because it's, you know, it has been a disappointing tournament. We spoke about that pre-game. We spoke about we needed to see some of that passion and brave heart spirit in, in, in this game, and, and I think we've seen that in, in abundance so far. Like you said, they've been under incredible amounts of pressure throughout the game, but they've manufactured a way through the intercept try that John just spoke about there with Wormsley, and then even at the back end of the half to snatch one before half time is is fantastic. Let's not forget Ray Louis scored in, in the in the meantime. Yeah. There was another try to Fiji, wasn't there? And they might have run away with it, you know, that fair play to Scotland that they've kept going as well. Yeah, yeah. they did. And, and and look, this was quite simple, really. A compete for a catch. Revolu has been really good, really sharp, looked dangerous with the ball, uh, comes up with a try. And, and again, this is another opportunity for the game to slide away from Scotland. Yeah. Now, the appetite and the hunger to stick in and stick in is what's been impressive because at any one stage in this game, Scotland would have been excused for the game getting away from them by a mile. We've questioned their appetite. Uh, and, and that, 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 that's a great try there from, from Fiji. It, it looks simple, but there's more to it there. They they kick for Coruscant. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, for kick out, which we see week in, week out for Penrith. Uh, hopefully be doing that at Canterbury next year. But then off the back of that, we I think most of us here thought that, you know, the floodgates were going to open. But they didn't. And I'm delighted that we're actually going to see 40 minutes of hopefully competitive rugby league because I, I thought at that moment in particular, yeah, I thought it was going to be a... But Scotland, yeah, another, Scotland another just did runaway a, great, score. a great job of hanging in and, and they got what they deserved by the end of the and half. it was a really well-worked try. Yeah, and, yeah, but fantastic. And Beautiful it's a great touch James Bell. Bell. That, is fantastic. A, that, is a, that is a right touch. Loose, loose forward playing standoff. Just very delicate touch. I think Kyle Emmel called it gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous <laughs> well, it, kick. It was a gorgeous kick because, like I said, he's not normally a halfback. He's he's deputising in this role this evening because of the players that are out. But I love the, not only the execution of skill with the kick through, but the vision as well to see that the fullback for Fuji is out of position, sees it as an opportunity there in behind the line. And Ben Halliwell, you know, anticipated the kick, reacted, and deservedly scored that try to bring Scotland closer to Fuji at half time. Well, the Rugby League World Cup is not just about the men. The women's tournament gets underway on Tuesday and on Thursday, it's the turn of the wheelchairs. Now, if you haven't seen this before, you are in for a real treat. This is how it works. I'm James Simpson from England Wheelchair Rugby League and me and my teammates are going to take you through our set of six. One. Wheelchair Rugby League is just the running game in wheelchairs. We play with a rugby ball, pass backwards, two 40 minute halves. We kick with a closed fist. It's fast, it's aggressive, it's dynamic. The physical battles are insane. We play rugby league just in a wheelchair. Two. A playing team is made up of 10 players. There's five allowed on the pitch at any one time. We can make 10 interchanges. We play on a 40 metre by 20 metres pitch. Nice and big, lots of room. Helps keep the game fast, keep it flowing and make it exciting. Three. 
we make a tackle by stopping the player and removing their tag. Once you've made the tackle, you retreat four metres, turn around and get ready to go again. There's six tackles, and on your last tackle, you'll kick. So in wheelchair ability, you use a close fist, and then you can kick the ball. Four. The wheelchair rugby league is probably the most inclusive sport in the world. Literally anyone can play together. Old, young, male, female. Disabled people with non-disabled people. We play with a maximum of two non-disabled players on pitch at any one time. I think that's one of the things that really makes it the sport it is. Five. We play with a size four rugby ball, a bit smaller, because we need to be able to maneuver the chair at the same time we're handling the ball. You'll see a kicking tee, which is the same height as a wheel on the chair, and uh, you just kick it off that wheel, closed fist. Corner flags, post protectors. It's all the same, just slightly smaller to fit indoors. Six. The aim of the game is to outscore your opponent by scoring tries. You have to place the ball over the line on the floor, unless you're limited movement, at which point you tap your wheel. Scoring is very simple. Tries, four points. Conversion, penalty goal, two points. Stroke goal is one point. Just the same as you have in rugby league, just in a wheelchair. That's it, really, yeah. That's our basic guide to wheelchair rugby league. It's fast, it's aggressive, it's athletic, and it's incredibly skillful. We love playing it. It really is brilliant to watch. So here is what's coming up this week. The final game in this group is tonight as Australia take on Italy. You can watch from 7.25 on the iPlayer. Tomorrow, we've got Samoa versus France. The final game in England's group in the men's competition from 4.30. On Monday evening, it's Wales' final group game against PNG. Coverage starts at 7. On Tuesday afternoon, that women's competition begins as England take on Brazil from 1.45. And on Thursday, England begin their wheelchair campaign against the old enemy Australia. Coverage begins at 7. And tomorrow we have the final two games in the PDRL competition. The third place playoff between Wales and Australia and the final between England and New Zealand. The coverage starts at 2 on the website and the iPlayer. So Hendo, what do you want to see from Scotland in the second half? Look, what, what I, I think what we need to see from Scotland is, is better tackle management. I think they're going to have to really, really squeeze up that defensive line around the ruck area there, really work hard from marker and try and obviously do their best to contain a very powerful forward pack that the Fijians have because I think we probably saw that at the back end of that half that, albeit Scotland have done ever so well to stay in the contest, you know, Fiji bombed some opportunities and they scored that try off the kick, which just showcases to me if they get too much possession in that field position, they're going to score tries, so they've got to limit that. And you want to see Fiji play a bit more. It's fine winning your rooks and carrying it straight and aggressive, but to win a World Cup quarter-final semi-final, they're going to have to play a tiny. What do you think? I agree with John. They're going to have to play a little bit more, but I, I like the, the, the grit and determination from Scotland, but like Hendo said, just manage those tackles and they'll, they'll make their life a little bit easier. Well, let's take you back to our commentary team up at Kingston Park, Kyle Amor, and first, our commentator, Sharon Shortle. in sport that out of nowhere once you start getting a bit of momentum it's so difficult to lose that once you have it behind you but the momentum's been all in favour of the Fijians we'll get to find out what happens over the next 40 minutes it should be a cracker a long kickoff getting the second half started for Scotland going deep inside the Fijian half of the field and it's Fiji oh driven back there great That's effort all, yeah. by Scotland that looked like a full scrum pack right around the play with the ball but Sharon we didn't see any of that did we in the first half, so often Fiji just able to roll forward, get the get the bodies in between people and, and dictate the play on their terms. Well, this is better from Scotland. Yes, it's the opening set of the first half, but it shows you where they're at. It shows you where Nathan Graham wants them to be. And that's just a bit more physical there. It's just that there. It's a small thing, Sharon, but just his ability to get in front there. And look what happens off the next carry. There's a penalty given away because they're not set. The spacings are all wrong. And they just catch Taruva and a soft penalty on tackle four. And it looks like he's been hurt a little as well by that challenge. You just see it again and coming in. Oh, smack right around the chops there. Yeah, it's just poor, isn't it, really? Schneider, the man. Schneider. Yeah, so... Away that penalty there. 
I think it's Guy Graham as well in that. But that goes from looking like an almost perfect set, doesn't it? To then, you know, within a, to a play or two, it just gets chaotic, it gets scruffy. Hey. And as a result, Bain just catches him round the chops and gives away a penalty 40 metres away from the home line. And they can see that left arm there catches to Ruber. It's way too high, isn't it? And the ball will just get put out into the side of the field and, and just another 20 metres or so. Referee's got to have a word with him. The captain, Dale Ferguson, just pulled forward for Scotland as well. And I think... Has he got 10 minutes? Sinbind? Luke Bain? And it looks like Luke Bain's been sent to the stands for 10. So Scotland's task just made a little harder now. They're down to 12 men for the next 10 minutes as Brandon Wakeham just kicks for touch. That's awful, really. An awful start to the half of Scotland. He's disappointed, and he should be as well. So let's see what this means for the opening 10 minutes of this second half. It really could be a key part of the game. Scotland just 10 points behind Fiji, but now down to 12 men in Fiji with that ball in hand. Certainly getting a roll on every time they get near those Scotland posts, if the first half at least was anything to go by. So inside the 30. Tangi Tuimua with the position acting half. It's moved out along the line. Nice little double pump going there. Coming from Taruva. Still in possession, still going forward. His balance just getting the better of him. And the tackle is completed. Nagama at acting half. Goes to Wong. Hits that defensive line. Keeps his legs moving as well. Takes play very, very close to the whitewash. Fiji certainly in control of this set. Tangi Tuimua. Long ball to Wakem. Puts a chip over the top. It's high. Testing again out on that side for uh, Wormsley, who passes again that test and comes up with the ball for Scotland. It's, it's a knock on. Yeah, the referee yeah. indicates a knock on. That kick there. He's got far too much time. Not enough kick pressure on him. Kick out just under that ball. I'm just not a big fan of that. Just watch Wormsley's head here as he goes to take the ball. He turns his head away an awful lot. Rather than just keeping his eyes on the ball. He's done that twice and come up with an error under pressure. And Kikau did just enough, didn't he? I think he knew he wasn't really in the right position to get the ball, but still just did enough with his body to, yeah. to look like he was going for it, but also make sure that, that the job was a bit harder as well for, for Wormsley. And that's the result you get off the back of it. The scrum centre field. Ten metres out. The referee just not happy, bringing play back. We're seeing an awful lot of tries, aren't we, scored nowadays from this sort of position. So often they just pick off numbers. Will come and be an extra man. Dummy sold. Here goes Fiji straight from the base of the scrum. Well seen though by the Scottish defence. And a penalty offside. More pressure coming in. Tangy to a more. At the base of the scrum there. Just sees that the Scottish left edge just gets up hard. There's, a, there's an almighty hole there for him to expose. Bailey's Brown, the man that tried to close it in the end, but giving away the penalty. So the tap will be taken by Taruva. Goes towards the centre of the field. Uniayu are again doing the job that he did so well and effectively in the opening stages of the first half. But look at that defence from oh, Scotland brilliant. again. That's encouraging. Great work from the Scots. Pushing Fiji back a good 10 metres or so. So they will try again, will Fiji, that battering ram going up the centre of the field. Leo Levave, the man on off the bench. Gets to his feet. Tangi Tuimua out to Wakem. Keeps it moving. Kikau. Kikau again met by two, then three. A fourth one potentially in a Scottish shirt trying to get involved. And Kikau is held. Tangi Tuimua. Little ball this time. To Lowy. The legs driving forward. But still, Scotland stand firm. Bunny Iowa. Skips towards that defensive line. Tries to raise a hand, tries to swat off a Scott defender there. And this is the last of the set. Will they find space out wide? They're moving it towards the corner. And there go Fiji. And that's a try for the Fijians. Mike Acevo in at the corner. Simple hands in the end, leading to the first try of the second half. Yeah, an important score from them as well. While they've got that extra man with Bain in the bin. 
And once again, though, it was a really scruffy set from Fiji. The ball before this play unfolded ended up in the arms of Buddy Uawa when it wasn't on for him. He just then carries back to the centre field, lays a point and kick out there. He just does enough to catch the attention of Wormsley. Wormsley gets caught, sucked in, ball watching. We just see, he just gets it in between centre winger there, out the back, and Sebo. He's not going to get an easier try than that this afternoon, you wouldn't have thought. The two men that faced each other in the NRL Grand Final combining there for that try. Kikau and Sebo on opposing sides. Just, what, three, four weeks back now, I think, that NRL Grand Final. There's a subtle involvement in there as well from, you know, Rua Louis. I think he's been outstanding tonight. The, the, the touches that he've had, just that play there before up in kick out hands he just goes to the line he has a man almost leading a, a false line he finds kick out out the back and kick out he does the rest doesn't he Ray Louis I've been really impressed with him so the conversion attempt to come again from Brandon Wakeham he's had an impeccable evening so far with the boot three from three and into the seven he got last week against Italy Let's see if we can add the extras with this one. 100% success rate for the halfback. Almost a hush, relatively, falls off the ground while we're waiting for this one to be converted. And it is converted. The flags go up, the two points are added on. Let's go down and get the latest from the sidelines with Jenna. Yeah, thanks very much, Sharon. I can tell you that at halftime, the players were coming back out I was stood in the tunnel every single Scotland player had a great big smile on their face the only one that did not was Matty Russell I can tell you that hamstring injury will keep him out for the rest of this game but speaking to the head coach Nathan Graham he said that he was so happy with that half he said that his team this is likely to be their final game of this World Cup so they're going to play their hardest in this second half uh, as far as Fiji go I spoke to James Webster who is the assistant manager he said it's a great game he said Scotland have turned up to play uh, there was just one message however and that is to play more direct and Abby Corosau is still on the sidelines I spoke to him I said will you be going back on he looked at me and he said yes he will he's simply too cold to be sat for the rest of this game on the sidelines Sharon I can tell you winter has certainly arrived in Newcastle <laughs> and Hesley, we all agree with that one I think Jenna thank you it's a bit cold to be sitting on the sidelines get the thermals on this evening people to Fiji then with that ball. This is the last of the set. Wakeham with the kick. It's high again. It's spinning. Okay. Yeah, and it's going to be an awkward bounce as well. Oh, and it's messed up by Dixon. And that could be costly for the Scots with that dropout to come. Yeah, well, James Webster there said in that interview to Jenna Brooks how he just wanted his side to be more direct. Well, they certainly were on that set. He just rolled through with simple one out carries rolling down the field and they put a towering kick in that can't be dealt with and you see the pitches here it's not quite dealt with there and Kevin Nagama drags David Dixon over choose the run player there it's forced with nowhere else to go they go for a short one again third time lucky no yeah, every drop out they've had so far from Scotland has been short but Fiji with that ball, the Gamera acting hard, offloads to Wong, who steps in almost through there, I thought, but the gap was closed well by Garn for Scotland. The tackle's in there, Team B helping out, and the Gamera again takes it and sends it towards the centre of the field, driving through Honey Ayu, where only, only knows one way how to run that lad, and that's straight and right in front of the post as well. Fiji keeping it moving, trying to find gaps as the gap out wide again. Kikau keeps it going, but they need to set chance the again. And it's the air with the ball. It's got to be held down there, but what a reliever of pressure that interception was from Bailey Liu for Scotland. And it's the Scots now that try and get some momentum with Wormsley. He's brought down just outside the 40. Fiji leading by 24 points to 8. Keeping it moving. Centre of the field. Still in possession. Ken Lynette. Scotland making good yards now in this set. Bit of a fumble there, but play on, says the referee. Bit of a hesitation as Bailey, uh, Bailey's brow just looks up at the ref just to check. But he's happy. Play continues. Schneider now. Ferguson trying to set and lead as a captain, driving forward. 
he'll be brought down just outside the tent. Yeah, Bill Ferguson, his willingness to stay on his feet and refusing to be put down. In the end, the Fijians were forced to strip the ball from him. Terrific strength there. The former Huddersfield giant man, Dale Ferguson. So Bailey's Brow was first receiver, taking it in on the first of the set from the penalty for Scotland, right in front of the post. This could make it interesting again if Scotland can score from this position. It goes out. Keeping it moving from Val. Oh, what a pass! Still through. Scotland are in. Bailey Lou, the man that started the break, finishes it for Scotland. Oh, the Scottish side is certainly right back in this once more, aren't they? It's a game of cat and mouse at the moment. And that man there, Bailey Lou, the Sheffield Eagle, with a wonderful piece of footwork out on that right hand side. Well, the encouraging thing for Scotland is twice they've been down in good ball territory and twice they've come away with tries. So the message is simple. Play the game down that end of the field. Yes, they get a bit of luck there as Kickhouse spills the ball. It's a great break, isn't it? Tangy to and Mower. Look at the work he does there to pull the man down, Bailey Lou. The ball comes out wide here. James Bell out the back once again. Just that wonderful bit of footwork back inside there. And the man who started it all off with the break after the spill from Kickow up the other end of the field. Four players later, the dancing feet of him slides over and it's 24 12 and an important kick to come. I mentioned it there, Sharon, before. It really is a game of cat and mouse. And it's important now that the Scottish side build on from this. Where has this version of Scotland been in this World Cup? Well, look, if they'd have put this performance together at the start against Italy, certainly would have changed the course of their, their campaign. It's almost too little, too late, but in fact it is. But it's important for these sides. You know, we mentioned Ireland, we've mentioned Wales as well. So often that they're a new group looking towards that World Cup of 2025, but that isn't an excuse for how they performed. Don't get me wrong. But it's important that they build on it and they have to they had to have a performance here today and i think whilst they've had to do an awful lot of defending the willingness to stay in the contest has been incredible carl schneider now with an important kick he gets this to 10 point ball gear once more yeah change of kicker after the failed attempts from lachlan wormsley for the scots let's see if schneider's any more successful and he is See that ball movement once again. James Bell going straight into the line. There's an overchase there, isn't it, on that left hand edge? I think it's Valame and Kikau and everybody else, but the footwork, the hard right foot there from the try scorer, Bailey Louis. <laughs> what a moment to score. So the kick comes high again. Scotland take it cleanly and set off. That will have done them the power of good, that try. Fiji still looking good rolling forward, but Scotland are finding the gaps as they get a set restart awarded. It's important what they do now for the next 10 minutes. It's important that they just keep trying to roll forward, playing the game, like I mentioned there, down in Fiji's half is the key to this, obviously. But they've shown that they've only been down there twice and come away with points, but the game's so much more difficult to to score when you're so far away i've yet to see i've yet to see the scottish side come up with a line break really long kick downfield from schneider for the scots it's taken cleanly by taruva well that's better a little kick out of the nine taking away the threat there of taruva getting him trapped center field if this is where they've got to aim up now and not allow players to skip back across and find holes find lazy defenders Karawalevu brought down centre of the pitch, pitch still inside the uh, Fijian Turkey. That's a good tackle, a bit of a, almost a bit of a tip, I think, going on in there on uh, Sivo, but nothing given by the referee. And Fiji just looking for gaps up the centre, but not much being given at the moment. That's better from Scotland. Yeah, much better. Here we go again then, back on the field. Sandrugu, the first try scorer of the game. He's been spelled on the bench. Back on now for his second spell. And this is the last of the sets for Fiji. What will they do with it? The kick will come from Wakeham. 
it's high and it's spinning. Dixon again can't take that ball cleanly and Sandrugu picks it up once more. This is a clean set of six, 10 metres out. Again, it could be a costly error for the Scots. One, there's a bit of a shuffle, it goes to Aitken, but the ball goes to ground, not taken cleanly. That was a massive hit that came in from Jack Teamby. looks like he's taken a bit of a knock as a result of that contact but play continues it's one with that ball driving towards the line again in a good position the Fijians is that clean lost that he's lost it knock on another one of those errors that I spoke about Sharon in, in key parts of the field you know, the yardage you get to those areas of the field hasn't been a problem at all for this Fijian side it's just what they've done down here hasn't been quite the quality that we expected here tonight. I think it's Josh Wong there, was it, who spilled the ball. But going back to that kick there, the back the back three of, of Scotland, they've struggled, haven't they, under the high ball tonight. But what can certainly help them out is to get some sort of pressure on the kickers and not allow them the hand time in the air, the precision of the kick, to be exactly where they want it to be. Get a bit more kick pressure on them with a better chance of having a cleaner catch for sure. So Scotland with the opportunity and just relieve a bit of pressure that's inside their half of the field. Steady away. Like the the Fijians are aiming up now, Sharon. Yeah. Attacking their attack. The Fijians have got to, for me, look like they did at the first 10 minutes of the first half. Come out and look like they mean business because they were all over the Scots at the start of the first half. Yeah, they certainly were. But, you know, sometimes it's so difficult to go into a game. You know, you've got to think about this Fijian side that so often they go into games as underdogs, don't they? You know, when they're playing the likes of Samoa and Tonga and Australia, it's a very different, a different beast almost if you go into a game as, as clear favourites and how you handle that. And perhaps... Scotland looking to shit the ball. James Bell rides the tackle there from kick out and goes back centre field. Dancing feet from him. Looking to find the pass. Nowhere there. Tackle comes in. This is the last of the set for Scotland. The ball will go back. It will find the kicker. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Grab to there from Scotland. And they've got space out wide as a result with Wormsley. He sees space. He chips over the top. The defence is there. But Wormsley is there to try and regather it. He can't the ball first and it's Fiji oh. that come up with that ball and it's Sivo with ball in hand and he just gets back into the field of play. Well what about that there, the run from the half back as well, everyone thought he was going to put a kick in, the chase is an over chase from him and he just sees the gap, shifts the ball out to Walmsley who puts a clever little kick in and just can't quite do enough to trap him Sivo in the corner. As the referee just stops playing. <laughs> It's going to be Fiji scrum here, but just watch this. Kick out there. He's trying to put that kick pressure on that I talked about, but he's just doing it for doing it's sake rather than going to him. Off the warms with that chip over the top there, trying to outrun Sebo. He catches it. He's hot. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. Wow. He gets away with that one, doesn't he? Sometimes you get the luck, don't you? Warms on that occasion. They were Sebo. trying all yeah. sorts there, weren't they, the Scots? The two sides coming to pat down. Just going back to a point that you made a few minutes ago, Kyle, about Fiji not being the underdogs in this one and coming in yeah. as favourites. On the flip side for Scotland, oh, here we go, half a break for Fiji. The flip side for Scotland, they've got no pressure on them at all for this one. No, they've got none, absolutely. You're dead right. And, and I think that's why you've seen that kind of dogged, uh, gritty performance from the Scots in terms of just hanging in there. They've scored a couple of good, nice little tries as well, haven't they? But on the balance of play, Sharon, they have been, you know, as we approach the hour mark, they have been second best. You know, it's very difficult to argue against that. But you never know in rugby league, and particularly in a 10 point ball game. And giving away six agains like that when, when they're just able to roll down the field. And I mentioned there about the, the amount of possession they've had, the amount of play of the ball speed that Fiji have had. And this is where it'll take its toll in the final quarter as we approach that. So often teams that have been on that receiving end of of such stats and numbers and figures will they end up just capitulating at the back end of games he can't find the gap and he goes straight through it accelerates will he find the try line just held Charles great defence from the Scots stopping what would have been a certain try from Kikau but the Fijians again trying to pick up that pace and momentum just broke down there slightly though coming in with that ball from Wakeham 
The tackle's complete. Going on the short side. Here's Nice. Good ring at the angle for James. What a big hit coming in. Huge hit from the Scots. As a kick comes across field from Fiji, looking for space. It can't be taken by Carol Evu. But wow, bodies everywhere. Big contact in there as well. And Carol, Carol Evu just almost wants that to guide into his hand. But what about this? Into a ball, it goes right to the line. Pops up. Ray Willow, I think it is. He gets a big contact on the end of it, but he almost just wants that to guide into his hands, doesn't he? He just wants to catch and cuddle that over. So Scotland up to the halfway line. Dixon kicks his feet a little as he tries to deceive the Fijian defence. He didn't manage it, they were there and the tackle was made. But once again, Sharon, Scotland survive. And look where they are now. And they only need a half a chance here. That's all they need. Still got a couple left on this set as well, have Scotland. It goes back to Jack Teamby, who comes towards the centre of the field. This will be the last for the Scots. Schneider at acting half. It goes out to Bell. Bell looks for the kick, goes towards the corner. High leap taken nicely by Sebo, challenged by Wormsley, and a penalty awarded to the Fijians. Yeah. It's a soft penalty as well to give away, isn't it? Wormsley, that kick from Bell. We just see it. He's got an acre amount of time, hasn't he, to put that kick where he Let's wants. And Walmsley is deemed to tackle him in the air. And it is a penalty, you have to say. Sebo goes up into the air. They collide, don't they? I don't know what else he's supposed to do. His eyes are on the ball, but in the eyes of the law, Sharon, it is a penalty. Yeah, I'm not sure that was that was an attended tackle, to be fair to, no. to Lachlan Walmsley at all. I think it was, like you say, a collision. And he, he was going for the ball and met a brick wall that's called Michael Sebo. Yeah. The referee has got to make that call in a split second, oh, hasn't he? And he's deemed it. It was a penalty. His kick out now rolls forward, and there's a, another penalty here. Back to back penalties. Kick out and Walls are getting interested in one another now. And here comes the, here comes the cavalry in there. Cavalry is one way to put it. It isn't for help or hindrance. I'm never quite certain when everyone piles in, but certainly doing the best to separate the two instigators of the in scuffle. It. Yeah. 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 Wormsley, perhaps that left edge wasn't so happy with how he, he tackled Sebo in the air moments earlier. And if looks could kill, I think Lachlan Wormsley was just shooting daggers at whichever Fijian player it was there with that, that particular shot. You could see there the arm just coming through from Wormsley, looking quite, quite stiff, really. You, know, you just see there that it is, it's a little bit of a swinging arm, catches under the chin of, of kick out. The referee just sorts things out. It would have been interesting just going back to the tackle from Walmsley on Sevo if there had been a captain's challenge still available, whether he would have challenged that. I'm not sure it would have been the best of ideas. But clearly it's all stemmed from that. The, the, the action that we're seeing now is, as the referee just pulls out Lynette tell you for something. Scotland and, and the Galma for Fiji. One thing you can't question Lockwood Walmsley's go ability like to, to get under the skin and kick out the there. And perhaps it's not the most bravest or smartest choice, really, to pick a fight with the biggest man on the field. And he's there, he's all smiles and laughing about it, isn't he? I bet he is, he's not come off worse, has he, for a start, so he's got room to laugh about it, I think. Well, Kikau yeah. doesn't look quite as happy, got to say. Well, man mouth now on that left edge, such a strike weapon. I mentioned there about how his success with the, with the Penrith Panthers, scored 38 tries in 123 appearances from, for them. The last thing you probably want to do is wind him up. Well, he's in there again, Walmsley, isn't he? Well, the penalty actually given for offside, not for the high tackle, so I think Walmsley got away with that one. Things are just spicing up now. Here's another penalty. That's three in a row. And I think on that occasion, this time it was Sam Lockley. If you watch where he comes from, and there's a bit more he pushing the centre. Just watch Sam Lockley. How far he comes from trying to put a shot on. He gets nowhere near him. And I think it's him who's offside. There's three penalties in a row now, and you just you just hope that this doesn't sort of unfold into a really scruffy period for Scotland where the game just gets blown away from them. Yeah, if they lose the discipline, that obviously isn't going to help their cause at all. The referee just bringing 
blow back. Again, it was, uh, I think, offside. The penalty. But the referee just was calling of Lachlan Walmsley again, who's loving life by the look of him at the moment, regardless of, of whatever the referee said to him. It's all right for him when those penalties get given away as a winger. You just go stand out wide. Leave all your, all your middles to do all the rest of the donkey work. <laughs> not, that you're bitter, not that you're bitter. <laughs> So there comes Fiji again, inside the Scotland 20 metre line. Tangatui Mua with that ball out towards Wakem, keeping it alive. Here we go with Tikau. Tikau brought down. Fiji looking dangerous though. They'll be looking for another try, just to be sure. Is this going to be it? Driving for the line. Great work coming in from the Scots. Tackle complete on Leo Levave. Just gets his arm free and it's played. It goes back to Wakeham. Wakeham's got his runners out on the right hand side. Will he need them? Oh, no, he won't. And once again, Sharon, what am I going to say? You know, fine well, it's another opportunity just gone. They haven't quite nailed it, have they? Once more. You see there that pass. It ends up, it's never really on, is it? Just hit the. Scotland. He brings play to just inside. Towards the centre of the field, providing, of course, Italy don't pull off a shock in that. The game down. We spoke about it, Boyle. Club Walmsley there. Hey, I'm going to do Walmsley that. must be I'm walking on thin ice at the moment. Well, he certainly is. He is with Billy Army kick out and all. That man Walmsley. He's not bothered. He's still taking it in. He's going through the middle as a winger, trying to take on the big men of the Fijian side. Another big hit coming in as well there from Fiji. Into a Fijian wall there. This game has really increased with intensity and picked up and become a spectacle. The, the way it started, I didn't think we were going to see this evening, but this second half has really, really picked up. Well, I'll tell you, Scotland can get a try, then this game will reach boiling point. There's no doubt about that. You mentioned it there, the intensity, the, the spiciness of it certainly picked up. A high kick over to that right hand side. Oh, great take. And it's Bell that launched it, Sivo that took it, Fiji are back in possession. Let's see how many metres they can make downfield and see the kick again. You see already there, play one. You just look at the, the carnage left behind them. The Scottish side, they can't get back. And that's a great shot there, I think it's James Bell. Driven back. Yeah, here goes Taruma. Still on his feet. And how many times has he had his head taken off tonight, Taruma? And look who's in the middle. In there. Yeah. Kick out, interested again. Yeah. Here we go. And here we are indeed with, as you put it earlier, Kyle, the cavalry piling in to try and sort things out. Taruma at the bottom of it somewhere with Wormsley. The ball's loose. Good luck to the referee, Tom Grant, in sorting this one out. This is why you don't fancy that, Joe. Not only has he had his head taken off there, Taruva, he's been trampled all over. Just looking down that line, please. Satnelli comes running in. Lock up Wormsley there. Hey, I'm going to deal with that. Wormsley must be walking on thin ice at the moment. Well, he certainly is. He is with Billy Army kick out and all. Little shake of the head from the Scottish winger. And the referee. Just with a bit there. of work to do himself. Yeah, it was that offload, wasn't it? James Bell got underneath there. Offloads, and it's Wormsley, and it is another swinging arm. You can see there, Taruma spots the gap. It's a high tackle, it is, isn't it? You know. The contact's there, isn't it? In fact, looking at that there, that's almost as bad as Luke Baines earlier on, isn't it, really? Billy Army kick out there. Of course, big man going to come running in to protect his, his fullback, and rightly so. I think Wormsley might be in a little spot of bother here. But more of consistency of what we've seen throughout the tournament. And it is, it's a yellow card, Sharon, it's 10 minutes in the bin. You can't really argue with it. So Lachlan Wormsley goes to the sidelines for the next 10 minutes. Scotland again on the back foot. It's the second yellow card of this half. Luke Bain spending the first 10 minutes of this second half for Scotland in the sin bin. And still, the gap is 10 points between these two sides, and it looks like we've got another one going as well here. For the Army Key Cow, getting his marching orders. Yeah. yeah. So often in the modern day game, you can't really come running in. 
and that's or been try and take the laws into your own hands. I didn't quite see what he did over than just pile into Lachlan Wormsley. It was really a, more of a grapple rather than anything more than that. But might get another replay of that and see if there's anything more to it. But perhaps the referee just feeling what we felt, Sharon, in the last four, five or six minutes and, and just looking to take the law back into his own hands and just cool the game down. We spoke about it boiling and bubbling away. So both sides down to 12. Kikau, I think, can't quite believe that that decision was given and, and he won't be part of this game for the next 10 minutes. But it keeps it even. Both sides down to 12. Both sides with more space out wide as well. Can they exploit it, even though they're there with, with one man down each? But it, it does give them that extra bit of room on the field. So let's see, see what difference it makes for them. So here we go again with Sims. Driving his way forward. BG really putting pressure on again with that possession. Six again, that set restart. Hooter in the background. Wakeham keeping it moving. Sandrugo go driving forward. Team B right around his waist. The tackle is made. Tangatui Mua. Taruva. Can he go himself? Taruva's going for it. The tackle is there. The defence is good from Scotland. But still Fiji pushing for a try that could be vital just to be sure for them. A little dart from acting half, no good for that. A Scotland read it. And there, that's it, that's the try. It's Ashton Sims as actors as well. Sorry, Corbin Sims actors as well from that try. And Sims just diving over the line. Yeah, a lovely little pass there, wasn't it? I think it was Sandrugu who found himself at dummy half off the back of the play earlier there. Tangy Tuamawa just jumped out and had a look there, but the short pass there from Sims, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And the Scottish player tries to go low on the size of a, of a guy at Corbin Sims. He's just able to put the ball down, and there's a little bit of afters after it. We just see here. Yeah, it's a low tackle, isn't it, from Guy Graham. Corbin Sims, well that's just shell and peas for him, and there's a little bit of afters after it as well. Corbin Sims is quite a wind-up merchant himself, you know. And he's just there perhaps taunting and goading, knowing fine well that that probably kills the game off in terms of a Scottish comeback, but you never know. Corbin Sims, he was only drafted into this side really late on. He's got to try tonight. So the conversion to come, Corbin Sims playing his final games of rugby league we'll have another one after this is selected because PG of course will be through to the uh, quarter finals where they will meet New Zealand providing of course Italy don't pull off a shock in their games against Australia well, you would imagine that's probably not going to happen given how dominant Australia have been been pretty good so far we saw New Zealand as well and and just going under the radar a little bit, everyone perhaps speaking about England, Australia, Samoa, Tonga, those Kiwis. Jerome Hughes was incredible last night. Wake up, just the extras there. And this BG side, well, they'll go into next week as underdogs. They've certainly got enough power up front. The back, the back five as well have been incredible tonight for them. Sometimes when they try and put the players on from left to right and moving around, sometimes the simplest there is through to the front door. So the first try of the evening from Sandragu was that, wasn't it? Just that short pass and that power play over the line when you get the same amount of points and 30 points to 14 scoreline. Starts to look towards the favour of the Fijians as they advance through. To both sides don't forget down to 12 men for the remainder of this game one apiece in the bin Wormsley and Kikau and that had really been coming as the short kickoff comes from Scotland it travels the 10 before being tapped backwards who's going to win that tussle Scotland says the referee Jack Teamby manages to get that ball wrenched away with that possession once again Sharon though it's another short play isn't it another you know perhaps Fiji haven't quite got the head in every play that's three times they've been done on a on a short dropout or a short kickoff an offload here from Scotland's promising I'll give credit to Charlie Emsley for getting that ball back it was he not Jack Team but he's a goal in the middle now Scotland it's not gone isn't it from them you can understand they're trying to force it they're trying to play we're inside the final ten minutes 
the two overplay in there. Sorry, Sharon. All right, problem was there. The two sides coming to pat down, but yeah, you're right, overplay. Yeah, just that little pass there back on the inside, and it's just one off low too many. I think it's Tangi Tuamoa who comes flying across and does enough. Really yeah, just gets in the eye line there. Does enough for Baby Dixon. Put him on. 70 minutes gone then. Fiji just taking control with that try from Corbin Sims. And Scotland looking to get one back themselves by the looks of things with that possession. Once more inside the Fijian 20. Slowly getting to his feet. Blue plays. It looks like he could be in a little bit of trouble there. And Scotland, oh, an interception, but a penalty awarded. I think the ball's stolen there. Yeah, I thought from this far away that we are, it looked like the Bell had spun out of the tackle and tried to promote the ball, but it obviously is a rip out. Just the speed it came out, Sharon, it looked from up here like it was that. But we can just see there, it's Corbin Sims. He has a good pull on it on that right arm of his. And Mikasivo is away. When Sims has been on, he's been an absolute nuisance, hasn't he, for Fiji? In a positive sense, he's been everywhere. He's, he's got, got the it big right, hits hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's got that balance right. But here comes Scotland outside the 10, keeping it moving out towards the left hand side. Oh, and it has gets to it from Fiji. Karawalevu can't take it cleanly. And the attack breaks down for Scotland. Well, Karawalevu. He's thinking to a lot more warms here. Whatever you can do, I can do the same. And he nearly does it, doesn't he? In exactly the same place that Lachlan Walmsley did in the first half. It's just that left arm, the big right arm. Can't quite pull it in. Scotland will get another chance. Ten metres out from that Fijian line. But the way this game's gone, Sharon, it's been Scotland will score next. So often that Fiji have just held enough of, a, of an arm length away from this game for Scotland to run any sort of sucker punch on them. So here we go again with Scotland driving through with Lynette. Lynette's brought down. Schneider out towards the centre of the field. A little bit of a step. Good hit coming in from Fiji. The tackle is completed. Schneider again. Centre of the field driving forward. It's luckily. Still putting that pressure on. Scotland looking to keep their side of the scoreboard. Still ticking over. One man at the moment trying to drive in towards that line Schneider takes it on the short side rebounds off the foot of a Fijian player it's a foot race now to get that possession back Scotland look like they've managed it 30 points to 14 the Fijians lead but can Scotland make that change here goes Charlie Emsley again called into the squad today not featured so far in this tournament until this afternoon as Scotland go driving forward once more Still with that ball. This feels like they're just taking a breather here, Scotland, and they will do now because the penalty will be given. The, uh, the sorry, the uh, the knock-on has been given by the referee. Yeah, Corbin Sims all over loop in there, centre of the field. And you mentioned it, Sharon, about how he's been a bit of a thorn in their side in terms of getting underneath them and, and disrupting them. It's just there, isn't it? There's just too much weight on it, and the ball there uh, just comes out. I've seen another picture of that here. From the back, Corbin Sims there, just enough weight on him to dislodge that ball. Dufain has to be a little bit better and hold on to that. And that's where I stand by the Corbin Sims has been a nuisance comment because he just he just got it got it right, didn't he? He just got in the way and did enough to, to disrupt play for Scotland. So Fiji with that ball deep inside their half of the field. They're looking for back-to-back -back wins in the men's internationals for the first time of Fiji, and it certainly looks like they're going to manage it this evening as well. And they try and attack up the centre of the field once more. Scotland looking a little bit ragged in that defensive line, just doing enough though to bring in the tackle. And now it's Nagama, the captain for Fiji. Runs straight and direct. The blue shirts close the gap. The tackle's completed. Referee just, just bringing play back, saying the markers weren't quite where they should be, just taking the gamba back to the halfway line to play that ball. And that was a bit of a swat as well on Schneider. And I think it's a knock-on. I think it is. I'm just getting to that point now, isn't it? You know, 74 minutes on the clock. Game just getting scruffy once again, though. 
Fiji. Sandra Gudez thinking about offloading that ball when it's a, it's not really. The offload's on when Sharon, when you create enough of an impact and you carry the, the, the space is created for you, not labouring it in and just looking to promote the ball. That's the 14th error that they've made now. Remember Jenna Brooks at the start of the piece talking to the Fijian players about the number of errors they that they brought up as being a concern for them. 11 errors against Australia, 10 against Italy, and 13 here tonight. They're not learning, are they? And that's perhaps a concern for the Fijian staff going forward. We've got just over six minutes remaining on this clock. If you want to uh, have a think, Kyle, about who your player of the match will be, we'll ask you for that in just a, a couple of minutes' time as Scotland take the ball from the base of the scrum. So the pass comes now for Bailey Brow for Scotland. He brings play to just inside. The Fijian half of the field with the set restart indicated by the hooter in the background. Scotland looking for metres. Again, it's the forward of Bailey's Brown trying to gain a few for them. By me, by me. The Bravehearts, 30 points to 14. They are trailing, but it's been a much better second half for them. And both sides still down to 12 men in this half as well. Helliwell brought to ground. Out and away from the base of the scrum. Oh, half a break coming there from Callum Garth. He's brought down though, but Scotland looking to get a bit more momentum once more with that attacking play. Schneider tries to put the kick through. The ball almost gets lost a little bit down on that field. It's picked up though by Fiji. The referee indicating there's a knock on in there as well. Who you see in there that play unfold? There's a knock on in there. It's going to be Scotland ball. They're going to get another opportunity here, Sharon. So the two sides will come to pack down again. And it will be Scotland with the possession of the head and feet of the scrub. Ten metres away from the line. Let's see if it can make anything from this one. The ball, oh, scruffy pass. It's picked up though eventually by Scotland. They'll lose a few metres as a result. Driving forward, it's Emsley. Well, Tries to keep his legs moving. Gets another couple of metres further forward. Here's Schneider. Schneider once more. The middle of the field to Luckley. Good hit from Luckley. Meeting that Fijian defensive line. Can Scotland get the extra points before this game is out? The kick? No. The pass from Bell. Low and high and long into the corner out wide. The Fijian defenders do their job. The tackle is made. And they come up with that possession as well. And now it's Scotland on the defence. So what can Fiji do now? Plenty of work to do. Kikau, he's back on from the Sinbin. He'll be joined as well by Lachlan Wormsley, who was out there of healing for that ball, that long pass that went out wide. It's just too easy to defend that, isn't it? And as a result now, they're just going to carry on doing what they've been doing for the majority of the game. You know, they haven't been... They haven't been exceptional tonight, Fiji, but they've done it all, haven't they? It's Wakeham now. Puts a little kick downfield, and it's going to be picked up there. Over on that far side, Luke Payne, as he tries to get away. The tackle is made. Out and away. Trying to find space up the middle again, Scotland. Still with work to do. Drive through from David Dixon. Schneider towards the right hand side oh, oh, big tackle oh, coming in there I think it's Corbin Sims the man on Luke Bain yeah, it's, a, it's a bad one isn't it yeah I think his nuisance just crossed the line potentially there we might hear a little bit about that later on in the week it's tipped above the horizontal isn't it well up no no it's, there's nothing more in than that it's just no. a bad tackle Boy, maybe landed awkwardly. It's a good show and go, isn't it? Yeah, the legs came but above it, the hips. Yeah, though, didn't yeah, it? but he lands on his back by the end of it. There. So the referee will give well, possession. Yeah, there's an opportunity for Scotland inside the next minute and a half, the final minute and a half to get a score. 
So Scotland with the possession from the penalty and the player of the match picked this evening by Kyle Amor is... They've got to go to the fullback for Fiji, Taruva. You know, he's made 168 metres. He's carried the ball more times than anyone else. And I just think he's been a, an absolute class above. He's been a complete live wire tonight. And has been in the other game that I've seen him last week. But even more so tonight, he's just a constant threat. Any time there's half a break, well, he's there. A special mention as well to Ray Walui. Well, he's been good tonight, but he just pips it for me. Just been a constant threat all evening. So the Kazoo player of the match is the fullback Sunia Taruva. Has he got a break there from Fiji? But again, the ball comes to ground. We're just we're just seeing mistakes now starting to creep in again from these two sides in the closing stages of this game. But it's been an absolute ding dong of this second half. Well, look once again. I think Scotland have just done what they done what Nathan Graham set out to do and just, and, just, and just stay in the contest just go out there with loads of effort and the amount of, that they've had to defend you know I think at the at the end of the first half it was 68 percent 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 sorry possession and uh, and, I'm, Scotland, I'm no room to yeah, and in Scotland they've they just had to absorb all of that all evening and they've been able to do so and, and, and really just kept turning Fiji away and forcing them into little mistakes and you have to credit them for that However, this is the World Cup and a 30 points to 14 scoreline suggests that they are second best. And Fiji, once again, they haven't exactly blown me away tonight here in terms of a performance, but they've done enough. And that's the main thing for them to get through this group off the back of two wins. The kick for touch taking Scotland nicely into the centre of the field. Jack Teamby trying to drive forward. He's lost the ball as well. Kick out. Just rips it from the possession. Kick out there. Taking the ball away. He just chews the clock down inside the final five seconds. And, and with that, the end of the road for Scotland, Sharon. Yeah, play on, shouts the referee. With just second or two on the clock as that Hooter goes. Fiji win. They beat Scotland, and providing there isn't a shock later with Italy beating Australia, it will be Fiji that clinch second place in Group B and progress to the quarter-finals of the 2021 Rugby League World Cup. They will meet New Zealand in the quarter-finals. But this evening, job done for Fiji. A real battle, particularly in this second half, but in the end, Fiji coming out winners by 30 points to 14. Let's have a look at how the uh, table looks after that. Fiji pretty much sealed second place, though uh, we've still got a match to go. Australia sit top. Fiji currently second. Australia, well, you, they are pretty much, I think they are definitely through. Fiji are through unless Italy thump Australia, and that would definitely be the shock of the tournament, it is fair to say. We're a lot happier, aren't we? I know than you were before the game. Oh, absolutely. You said he wasn't that grumpy before, Tanya. <laughs> oh, you're really grumpy, Andrew. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, I, I didn't know yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I did have... You, you're In right. comparison had... to you, he wasn't, but that's, you know... <laughs> no, Tanya, you're 100%. I did have an edge before the game because I have been disappointed by the Scottish campaign in this World Cup. However, a very spirited performance here from the Scots. It certainly filled me with a lot more confidence and pride um, as a Scotsman. So, yeah, look, I... I they were never probably going to win this game. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. Going into the contest, and I think it was something that was probably discussed by the head coach that he wanted just to see that effort, that endeavour, and that brave hard spirit. And I, and I thought we saw that in abundance tonight from Scotland. I think they did everything they could. You know, they weathered they weathered an attacking raid after raid. They kept turning up for each other. They scrambled. They manufactured some tries out of nowhere, and they just competed. They just competed for the 80 minutes, which is pleasing. I think as well, you could see it meant something to them today. Yeah, 100%. like when they score those tries, they go over and they actually sell. Celebrate. 
that, that, that shows that they care for yeah. one another, which we haven't seen so far in this tournament. And they've taken some of their star players out, so they've got three or and four players. And they lost players. Matty Russell Myers early on in missing, this. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's funny, isn't it? Sometimes when you just focus on effort and getting commitment right, it's good things happen. It's their best performance. Look, we need to give some context to this. In 2016, the Scotland drew with New Zealand in the Four Nations. So we're talking about regressing. Well, they've just got beaten by Fiji, and it wasn't particularly tricky for Fiji, who I thought were, were poor at times tonight. But there's definitely more spirit from Scotland. There was a lot of effort, but Fiji, when they wanted to, really could score points at will. And, and they started the, the second half strongly, and it, it was really those... I think the points and the ease at which they scored points that was, was, was maybe the big difference. And this was a subtle piece of play, soft hands to Kikau. And, and, and it's just about uh, the positioning of the winger here, Brenda. Yeah, absolutely. Look, again, you know, Walker and Wolsey, he's just defending probably a little bit too tight there to Bailey Lou. And I thought Lou did a great job at checking the, checking the lead line and pushing off onto Kikau, but Wolsey just gets caught out there. But that was as a result of making an error previously yeah. that gave them the field position. And I think I think they had a man in the sim bin as well. They were down to 12 men at that stage. And then it was Sims jammer. Yeah, this is just a one-on-one, -on -one, a bit of a overreaction from Sims after scoring that oh, That's drive. embarrassing. I'm embarrassed by that. I just think what you're doing, yeah. a guy's just tackled you on the line. Yeah, he's, 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 he's well made a great his, effort to tackle you. Yeah. He's well within his rights to yeah. make the effort to tackle there. But the, the, the play before, um, the, the way the back rower uh, kick out sweeps out the back, that's not a traditional back rower's no. line to, to run. So I think that's what causes the confusion to Wormsley. And also, you know, if you're going to jam, probably don't want to jam on kick out do you because he's probably going to steam he's probably so, going to bump yeah, you off he's yeah. probably thinking uh no i'll just no. i'll just i'm just going to stay I'll, out here i'll just pretend as if i'm caught in two minds um but you know i can't i can't knock him for, for doing that no. but in in terms of the kick out line that edge back row usually the traditional hard unders line yeah. aggressive line or a skip out where he actually runs the sweep line which is usually reserved for the halfback so it's great play and we see Penrith do that a lot and it's great to see uh, Kikau doing that for, for Fiji as well well let's hear from the player of the match she's been talking to Jenna Brooks the kazoo player of the match is Sonia Taruva congratulations you got the result yeah. there were certainly some nervy moments throughout that 80 minutes no 100% uh, Scotland uh, made us fight to the death there I uh, got a bit fiery, like you said, there last 15 minutes. Uh, but yeah, just say that uh, shows um, how much it means to both countries. Why do you think it got fiery? Oh, it's just a lot to play for. Uh, Finals 40 for us next week, and um, you know they they probably knew they weren't going to make it, but they, like just shows a bit of pride in their jersey. And um, yeah, big shout out to the fans for both both countries showing out tonight. Um, very cold out here in England, so no, it was good. Uh, were you surprised by the challenge that Scotland presented? Uh, no, not really. We spoke about it through the week. Um, our leaders, Kicks, Uppy, Kev, they brought it up um, that they're going to fight fight to the end there. So we knew that we couldn't take the foot off the throat there and uh, we knew it was going to be eight a minute performance. Well, knockouts are next. Are Fiji ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see it come next Saturday, but um, oh, whenever we play. But yeah, big task ahead of us. Um, New Zealand, a very good team, quality all over the park. So yeah, we're going to have to be on our A game. The last three World Cups, Fiji made it through to the semi-finals. What's it going to take to take that next step? No, like we said, it was like a full 17-man uh, performance. Everyone's going to be on the A game. Big um, uh, few tasks ahead with you know teams like you got um, NZ, England, Australia. So like for us to compete with them, we're going to have to be on our best. Well, Tito, congratulations! You are the Kazoo Player of the Match. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you very much. Thank you. They won today, but they are going to need to be better. We expect if things go the way we expect, and we don't want to predetermine it, but it looks like they're going to play New Zealand. We, yeah. Yeah, yeah we don't <laughs> yeah, want to predetermine. Not yeah. everybody's Dump got a chance. Else. All things are equal. But, Sports fall for... Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. But we think. <laughs> very likely. But Fiji need to be better, for sure. I think execution-wise, at times, they were lacking. I thought physically, actually, Scotland took it to them. And when it got physical and Scotland got under the skin, yeah. I'm not sure they handled that particularly well. And if they think that the big nations aren't going to come after them physically, well... They're going to have a shock. And I just think they need to play a bit more. I, th I thought it was quite mundane how they played at times. When they got down in good ball, they had a crack. But they, they blew a lot of chances. Yeah, they did, yeah. And they, they've just got to be better all over the park, Tanya. And I believe they will be better. And I think the quarterfinals and the semis will elevate the standards of what we see way above what we've witnessed here. They're going to be playing New Zealand, no doubt about it. Like, let, let's not muck around. <laughs> if, if, they, if they don't, I'll walk back to Sydney on Tuesday instead of getting oh, that I would flight. love that. Yeah, I would that. love Can it. Can you walk on water? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll swim that part. But anyway, I think, I think when, you, when you look at this Fiji performance tonight, they missed some opportunities, but it looks like they had one eye on next week anyway. 
if that makes sense. I think you could just tell that, that, that and that's probably why their feathers got ruffled a little bit because they were thinking, well, hang on, what, what are you doing this for? We're, we're, we're playing the quarterfinals. And, you know, you can forgive them for that a little bit. Like, this, this game was just, they just needed to get the win. And, they did enough. Yeah, they, 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 they just did enough. And I think perhaps they're, they're saving a little bit in the tank for next week. Andrew, we've got three years to the next World Cup. What do you want to see from Scotland between now and then? They, they showed a lot of spirit tonight. Got another try in that second half. Yeah, well, look, what I want to see from Scotland is them to grow off the back of that performance tonight. But I think it's probably a bit deeper than that. I think we need to see a little bit more from the International Rugby League Federation and, and the European Federation in terms of how we can support these nations to, to grow and develop. Because one thing that is for certain, the heritage rule, which a lot of these home nations adopt, that's going to run out at some point in the future. So we need to be looking at a strategy or a plan of how are we going to be able to grow the games in these these nations how are we going to get more players available to qualify for, for these nations for the future to ensure that we've got a, a strong international competition yeah i think what we've done with the home nations is built an international team and then we've said right what we'll do is that is the pinnacle and we'll build the grassroots up from there but i'm not seeing that working so i think we need to build grassroots bigger grassroots invest in the games structures and pathways to get people through to that top level and it's then you're talking 10 15 year projects it might be painful throughout that period but just having a team and drafting players in from all over it, it's not proving very successful for it's those not foundations. sustainable either is it really no. so you you need a proper pathway system if you're going to be serious about it we're serious you're very very serious well, aren't you've all been very serious but you're heartened by that second half well by the whole performance from scotland yeah I mean, they can't find a new bunch of players. Do they take these players, work with them a bit harder in the next few years? Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously, these guys here, hopefully there's some young players in there too that will, will go on the journey for the next the next few years. They've obviously got to identify other talent as well within the game. And uh, But like I said, it's just... For me, it's difficult because a lot of these players are semi-professional, so it, they don't have that opportunity or that time to be able to invest in, you know, doing extra training sessions that some of like some of the T1 nations have. I think as well, like a, an international plan would be pretty handy as well, so yeah, we know totally where cool. we're going to be playing. Like we know there's a World Cup in France in three years' time. What's happening next year? To you, James. We, no, no, no. We no, are no, 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 Gentlemen, no, we are very you, nearly. You we are very nearly out of time. James, thank you for being with us. Now you've got a commentary to go before you head back uh, to Australia. You've got to make it up with your mother, who's not too happy yeah. with you. Yeah, couldn't but it's been great to have you get here. a second series with the BBC. But Chris Feather likes me. He's back. And out from all of us here. Goodbye. <laughs> The final group B game for Fiji and Scotland here in Newcastle. And kick out, touch it down.